Do you ever wonder how hackers can get on a Linux system and leave no trace? One of the things they exploit is the command history mechanism that's part of the Linux shell. The command history is a very useful tool for normal users that use the command line, but it can also reveal what the hackers did. In this video, we will look at a few ways that hackers use to obfuscate their command history artifacts. The history artifact is used for good and evil in the Linux world. Normal users utilize the command history functions to be more productive in their work. Using the up and down arrows or the bang to recall a previous command or the search function is a real time saver. Plus, in my case, it really cuts down on the typos. Hackers know that the history artifacts will show the breadcrumbs that are left behind and reveal the methods. So they will try to erase all traces that they were there by manipulating the shell history. So as a defer practitioner, you will need to know how they did what they did so you can be aware of what has happened on that system. One thing to note is that the command history is shell dependent. So shells like the generic born shell and dash, they don't have the history capability. So that's one technique that the hacker can use, right? They can launch a born shell and then do the work. And then when they exit, there is no history there. I will be speaking mostly to bash in this video as that's my default shell, but note that Z shell will have different commands. Leave me a comment below if you are interested in how to look at Z shell history. Now there are legit reasons when you want to hide your history. For example, if you are setting up your Wi-Fi config and you could be using the WPA passphrase command to set up the configuration file. So for example, I can type WPA underscore passphrase blue monkey forensics dash Wi-Fi because that's my SSID. And then I type in the password of secret one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to redirect that out to WPA underscore supplicant.conf. So you are typing the password so that the hash version of the pre-share key can be generated. And you might not want that password to be your history log because that's in the clear. The easy thing to do is to delete the entire history log. Let's start by looking at what we currently have. I will do history and then tell it that I only want the last 10 entries. So I do history and then 10. So we see here that there is definitely quite a bit of commands I have typed so far. So now I can clear it all away with the dash C option. So if I type history dash C, this is going to clear the current history list in memory. And when I verify with using the history command again, followed by some comment, you can distinguish this line from the other line. So I'm going to type history and then the pound, which basically says everything after this is going to be ignored. And then I'm going to type first and only command after clearing. And what we see here is that the output is only one line, right? The history command since we cleared the log. And so we see that clearing the log is an effective way for the bad guy to hide what they've done on your system. But if you think that seeing an empty history file will sound alarms, you can delete only specific lines to draw less attention to your presence. I'm going to do some magic here to create some history trail. So I'm going to do history dash R to read in a previously saved history log and then type in the name of the file, which is bash underscore history dot BKP. All right. So let's take a look at the last 10 lines in our history log and what it looks like right now. So history 10, and then I'm going to say pound baseline. So I know where I am. All right. So here we are, we see the last 10 commands. And let's say I want to delete entry number 148. So what I can do is type history dash D for delete and then 148. So this will delete entry number 148 and then everything after it will move up to fill in the gap, right? So 149 will become 148 and so forth. So I'm going to type history 10 pound after deletion of line 148. So as you can see, the command line that was 148 is now gone. And what was 149 is now 148. But wait, if you delete a line, that deletion line will be captured, right? Like this one. So wouldn't that look suspicious? Well, so to avoid a command from being added to the history log, I can use a space before type in command to eliminate it from even being logged in the first place. So what I can do is type space history dash D and then negative two. So here I use negative two as an offset for deletion. So it'll go backward and delete the second to last line. 
Okay, so I type enter, and then I'm gonna take a look at history again with history 10, and then pound after deletion of negative two. So notice that the line containing our first history deletion is gone, and we don't have any traces of when we did the deletion of line negative two, right? Because we use a space in front of that. So if you're following along on your system and this did not work for you, hold on. I'll get to a possible explanation of that in a section a little bit later. So if you want to delete a few lines, instead of specifying one line at a time, you can pick the first line you want to delete, in this example, line 150. And then if you want to delete three lines, you can set up a loop. So we're gonna do four, x equals, open braces, one dot dot three, n braces, semicolon, do history dash d, one five zero, semicolon, done. All right, so this will loop through three times and delete the history that is line 150. So it will delete these three lines right here, right? Because once you delete this 150, the one, what was 151 will become 150. And then if you delete that, the new 151 will become the new 150 and so, so on and so forth. And so we can verify that by doing history 10 and then pound after loop deletes. Now you see that the three lines are starting from line 150 are gone. And you can also just do history dash D of 150 dash 152, that works as well. So what we looked at so far is clearing history from memory, which is different than history that has been written out to a file. Remember, there's two things, right? In, in the Linux shell here, you have the history that is currently running in that memory, and then once you exit that shell, that history log in memory gets written out to a file. So if the bad guy wants to erase traces, they can edit the history file with an editor like VI or Nano, and then delete all the lines. And by default, the history file is usually called dot bash underscore history in the user's home folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and do VI tilde slash dot bash underscore history. And once I'm in VI, I can do colon one comma dollar sign D, right? So what this is gonna do is go from line one to the last line, which is represented by the dollar sign and then delete. Right, so now we have a blank file. So I can go ahead and write this out if I want to. So let's go ahead and leave this file. And now we can combine what we have done so far, which is clearing out the history from memory and clearing out the history log. So we first clear history from memory with a dash C option. And then we will write out that current history to the history file with the dash W option. This will essentially clear out that history file with our history in memory, which was just cleared. So I'm gonna do history dash C, ampersand, ampersand, history dash W, right? So to verify, we can just type history, and certainly we see that there is nothing there except for this last history command. And so memory is cleared, and so let's take a look at the history file and do cat tilde slash dot bash history, and we see that the file is also cleared out. So both things are cleared. So earlier when I told you that the dot bash history file in the user's home directory is the default location of the history file, you might wonder whether that can be changed and what determines that. Well, it's the environment variables that can affect things. Let's take a look at what variables are currently set that relates to the command history. So what I'm gonna do is type set, which prints out all of the environment variables, and then I'm gonna pipe it to grep of hist, H-I-S-T, all in capitals. So what we see here in my example is that there are five variables that relate to history. The first one I'm gonna look at is called hist file, which determines the location of the history file. So again, by default, it will be the dot bash history file that is in the user's home folder, but it can be set to anything you want. So if the bad guys want, they can change the location of the history file so that the log of what they did on the system will be diverted to a different file. Or if they want, they can set it to slash dev slash null, which will basically send it into the black hole. Or they can just unset that variable and then no history file will be kept. All right, so let's take a look at the existing history file. I'm gonna do ls-al of tilde slash dot bash history. So here we see the file, we see the last modified date, as well as the file size. So now I'm gonna unset that variable by typing unset hist file. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and do the ls-al command again. And notice the file is still there, which is fine. That's what we expect. And now if I do history-a, so what this is supposed to do with a dash a is append what's in memory into that bash history file. All right, so usually when I do that, the bash history file should get a little bit bigger and we'll have a updated modified time. So once I do the history dash a command, and then I go ahead and do ls minus al again on till the slash dot bash history. So even though we appended the history from memory into that file, Notice that the size of the file did not change because the hist file variable was not set, right? So it was not actually pointing at the bash history file. And so that's why the date did not change as well. So let's go ahead and set it back again so that you can see what it's supposed to do. So hist file equals tilde slash dot bash underscore history. And then I'm going to do history dash a again. And then to verify, I'm going to redo the ls dash al command. Now notice that the size of the file increased, right? Because we appended whatever history in memory is to this history file. And then the date is also updated. The second variable is hist size, which is the number of lines of history to keep in memory. And it's going to delete older ones when necessary. So the bad guys can set this variable so that the history file will not be kept. We can do hist size equals zero. And now when we type the history command, we see that the log is cleared and won't keep anything. So let's go ahead and set it back to the default of 1000 by doing his size equals 1000. And now when we do history again, uh, we see that the history is now restarted with the last command we just did. Note that even though the previous history items were cleared from memory, the numbering system actually itself was not cleared. So this is one way to know that something had happened here, right? This doesn't look normal when you see a number start off and it's not one. The third variable is hist file size, which is the number of lines in the history file. And the bad guys can set this variable to something in case they don't want to have any history get written out. So if they do hist file size equals zero, and we do an ls minus al of the dot, dot bash history file, we see that the file is cleared, all right? Now it's sized of zero. So let's go ahead and set it back to what it was set to by default. So I'm gonna do his size equals 2000. And now if I do ls minus al of tilde slash dot bad history, we see that the file size has not changed because we have not written out to that file. And then when we do history dash a, and then we do ls minus al again, we see that the size has definitely increased because we've written more things out to that file. And the fourth variable that is in my system is his control, which controls how to treat certain things such as whether to save duplicate commands. For example, if you type the history command twice in a row or three times in a row, you can choose to have it logged only once. So to have history ignore duplicate commands, you can set the his control equals ignore dupes, right? So it's going to ignore duplicates. So now I'm going to type history five. This is going to show us the last five uh, history commands that it kept. And then I'm going to type history five again. And in a normal basis, when it is not ignoring the duplicates, you will actually see two entries of history five but we only see one, right? Because it's ignoring the duplicates. So let's do this one more time, history five. And once again, you only see one instance of history five and not three that we typed in. So you can also have history that is not recording any command line that begins with a space character. Remember we talked about this earlier, right? If it didn't work for you, this is probably why you didn't have this proper variable set. So what we have to do is do his control equals ignore space. So now if we type space and then the word date and then enter, we see that the date command definitely ran, right? It gave us the date and time. But then if we type history five, we actually will not see that date command because it starts with a space, right? We've told it to ignore anything that starts with a space. And if you want to ignore both duplicates and ignore the leading space, then what you can do is do his control equals ignore both.
There are other ways to disable bash history. One is via something called shell options if your system is running the bash shell. There are settings that control the behavior of the shell that you're using by changing how the shell interprets and executes commands. You can see what options are available by typing set dash lowercase o. Notice there is one called history and it's currently turned on. So this is what we want to turn off if we don't want history. So to turn something off, what you need to use is the plus symbol. So I'm going to type set plus o history. So now I will type the other commands just so that we can verify that history is indeed turned off. So I'm going to do a date command. It comes back with a date. I'm going to do the fortune command. And then it comes back with a fortune. Not a very good one, but one in any case. And then now I'm going to type history five to see the last five things. And we don't see any history after we turn it off with the set plus O history command. All right, so if we're the hacker and we're done hacking with the system now, we can re-enable the history to avoid the detection. So we can use the dash O to turn history back on. So I'm going to type set dash O history. And then I'm going to type echo, quote, history is back on, end quote. And then history five again to see the last five commands. And so definitely we do see history being turned back on because we see the set dash O that we first started this block with. And then we see the echo history is back on. And then we see the history five. Another way of setting the shell options is with the shell option command, S-H-O-P-T. And once again, uh, you have to be running bash for this to work. If you're using Z shell, the commands are something different. So let me know in the comment if you want to see what happens in the Z shell. The options for shell options is dash S for setting and then dash U for unsetting. So if I want to turn off history, I can do S-H-O-P-T dash O-U and then history, right? Because I'm going to do option unset of history. And now that I have turned history log off, I am going to type some commands so we can verify that the history is indeed turned off. I'm going to type the date command. And we know that it ran because it came back with a date and timestamp. And then I'm going to type figlet blue monkey. And then I get this banner. And now I type history five. And so I don't see the last couple of commands that I just typed. So we do know that history is in fact off. To turn history back on, we can use the dash OS option to set the option. So I'm going to do SHOPT dash OS history. And now the history is turned back on. I'm going to do echo double quote history is back on end quote. And then I'm going to type history five and we should see the line echo history is back on and then history five. So we are good to go. So that's how you use the bash shell option command to turn off and on the history. So we covered a few methods of manipulating the command line history by turning off logging, deleting some or all of the history, or even hiding the logs. This is not an exhaustive list, but does cover a few methods that are commonly used by hackers. You may have noticed that there are certain ways of telling if these actions were taken so that as a defer practitioner, you can take the appropriate actions to further your investigation. I know that you will enjoy another Linux forensics video like this one here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe if you believe that butterflies are not what they used to be. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.